The order of service today is also found in your hymnal, if you don't have a bulletin, on page 144. Page 144. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We have come together to seek God's comfort in our sorrow and to rejoice in the promise of the resurrection. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ who said, Come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you wept at the grave of your friend Lazarus, and you consoled Mary and Martha in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Gerald, and dry the tears of all who weep. Calm our troubled hearts, dispel our doubts and fears, and lead us to praise you for having brought him to faith. In your rising from the dead, you conquered death and opened the gates to eternal life. Strengthen us with your word and lead us through this earthly life until at last we are united with you and all the saints in glory everlasting. Amen. The 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Join me now in the resurrection comfort. The congregation will reply with a bold printed section. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. The Apostle Paul writes to the Romans, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus gives us this comfort. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Thanks be to God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, we will be before the throne of God, Never again will we hunger. Never again will we thirst. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be our shepherd. He will lead us to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from our Let us pray. God of all grace, you sent your Son Jesus to destroy the power of death and to open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we too shall live. Comfort us with your promise that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come shall be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our first reading for today is found in John's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 1 to 5. And here we have Jesus 
speaking to his disciples, but he also speaks directly to all of us today. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The second reading is from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 10 and verse 13. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. We continue now by singing our first hymn. You will find it in our hymnal 411. Hymn number 411, what a friend we have in Jesus.
God's grace, His mercy, and His peace are yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and our Savior, amen. The word of God chosen for today's message is Psalm 34, verse 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. My dear friends, family, and friends of Jerry, as a pastor, one of my responsibilities is to speak at funerals. And I count it as one of the greatest privileges given to me. And I'm happy to do it. And today, I have the honor and the privilege of doing three things today in this message that I bring to you. The first one is that I have the honor of being able to remember Jerry's Christian life and share that all with you. The Lord blessed him with 77 years of grace, married to his wife Donna for more than 53 years, a faithful member of St. John. We have noted in his obituary that he worked for capital fixtures and later started his own cabinet business. And I can't help but think of Jerry every time I walk into my kitchen because his faithful service built a new cabinets in that parsonage. An example of his faith in action. And we saw today how he was honored by members of the Grover Fire Department. He served there for 29 years and he enjoyed showing horses, hunting, fishing, playing cards, and I was told, especially when he was winning. And today, number two, I get the privilege of being able to serve Jerry's family. I'm so thankful to Donna, who has given me this opportunity today. Sunday afternoon, I, I spent time with her making arrangements for today's service. The readings that we heard today were, were chosen, and I think they're very fitting and coincide with the message that I have today from Psalm 38. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. There is a peace today. It may not seem like it, but there is a peace that comes today found in God's word because Jerry is no longer struggling against a curse that we all struggle with, and that is the curse of sin. He is at peace for eternity with his Lord and his Savior. Oh, how we wish we could have kept him for longer period of time here on this earth. But the Lord had prepared a home for him because he loves him. And the Lord promises today to be close to all of you. He is close to the brokenhearted. He is close to those who are crushed in spirit. He knows the pain.
that you are feeling today. And the last point that I am so honored and privileged to be able to do today is this, is that I get to point out to all of you Jerry's Lord and Savior. When I got the news of Jerry's passing, it was a shock to me. I'm sure it's a shock to many of us here today, so sudden. And that shock leaves us with the feeling of emptiness and profound grief. And many have come today and the days before this service and have shown their support and their concern for Donna and the rest of the family. Those closest to Jerry have been surrounded by a great love. And that love, we know, comes from God himself. But death, death is all around us. Death is universal. And we know it is true. It's right in front of us today. And there's something terribly wrong with death. The human body should not be lifeless, soulless, as we notice today. A wife should not be without her husband. And death fills us with grief and sorrow, and rightfully so, because death is our enemy. We might try to convince ourselves that it's just natural, it's the way things are, but we know better. The grief and the sorrow that is felt today tells us this is not the way it's supposed to be. But why? Why do we die? The answer is found in each and every one of us. We all die because of a curse. The curse of sin. The Bible is very clear. The wages of sin is death. There's no escaping it. Sinners deserve death. But Jerry knew the answer to this curse. Nails. Now you might think, why did pastor say the answer is nails? But Jerry knew it. He knew about nails. The common nail, the finishing nail, the roofing nail, the framing nail, and, and many more nails. He was a carpenter. But he also knew the son of a carpenter. This son of a carpenter would have known about nails, but not the nails used to build. They were the nails that pierced him. The son of a carpenter, Jerry's Lord and Savior. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his stripes... We are healed. Isaiah 53, verse 5. What a blessing indeed. Those nails. Jerry knew. And it's my pleasure today, on behalf of Jerry, to share that with all of you. We continue now with using the words of the Apostles' Creed printed in your worship folder or on 
in your hymnal the words of the faith that Jerry held so dear. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue now with our next hymn, 417. 417. I'm but a stranger here. Let us pray. Almighty God, we praise you for the great company of saints who have finished their lives in faith and now rest from their labors. 
We remember especially our loved one, Gerald, whom you have redeemed by the blood of your son and received as your dear child through holy baptism. We thank you for giving him to us as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your compassion, comfort all who are sad in this hour. Lord, in your mercy. We praise you for your love in Christ, which sustains us in life and death. In our earthly sorrows, help us find strength in the fellowship of the church, joy in the forgiveness of sins, and hope in the resurrection to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. You do not leave us comfortless, but strengthen and care for us through your word and sacrament. You give us family, friends, and neighbors to help when there is loneliness now and in the days to come. Brighten our future with a firm trust in your promises and care. Lord, in your mercy, remove our fears and make us bold to pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. We conclude our service this morning with the last hymn, 397, 397, Just As I Am Without One Plea.
This marks the end of our 